Hello and welcome to SLE. Today we're doing the instructional video for this eight and a half by 28 foot long yellow with silver trim and eight foot porch concession trailer. So today we're gonna to start with power supply. As you can see here on the tongue, we have the generator box with on the extended tongue here. So whether you're running off of generator or shore power, and for today's purposes, we are running off of our supplied shore power here. Please, first thing you need to do is make sure that your power supply is turned off before connecting to it, okay? S to connect to it, you're simply going to come here, take your plug here, line your notch up, push it in, and give it a twist to the right, and then you can screw this piece here on this little ring you can screw that on to secure it in place then once you've done that then plug your other end into your power source whether it be again shore power or generator this is a 240 volt system so please make sure that you are safe with it can be a dangerous amount of electricity there all right we're going to look in here inside the generator box so inside, you see the platform here to mount it on. You just simply pull this handle, twist that up to lock it in place. Pull this, slide this out. And there it is. You do have a stand here in the corner, right there, to connect, and it connects up right here where this clip is. All right. And then this piece here, this is your speed jack for your stabilization jacks. We'll go over that here in just a minute. Just wanted to show the generator box there. All right. And then of course the 100 pound propane tank and cage on the front there next up we have the two foot by 78 inch tall door that goes into the v-nose get a look in here so here on the wall right next to it these two switches that first one turns on the fan and then the second one turns on the led interior light there all right, so inside the V-nose, you can see the electrical panel here. Open that. These are labeled here as to which switch, which breakers go to what. And then you have the inverter box here. So when the green light on the bottom is on, that tells you that the inverter box is charging the 12 volt battery. And you'll have that, Anytime the unit is connected to a power supply, generator, or short power, that inverter box should be charging the 12 volt battery. The 12 volt battery runs all of your interior and exterior LED lights and your water pump. So you can work in and around the unit without having to be connected to a power supply for cleaning up, things of that sort. All right. And then right here, this is your fuse panel for the 12 volt system. And this one, I'm not sure, I don't. Yes, it does have the little light here below. So if one of those fuses blows, then that light will turn on, indicating that that fuse is not working and is blown. All right. I have a 120 outlet here. Plug that in, let you see that that's working as it should. And that will do it for inside here, with the exception of down here, this little door right inside the door. This simply looks underneath. You can see your freshwater tank there. This is the 30 gallon freshwater tank. And then the water pump and water heater are on around. So let's go over these lines right quick. So 
this line here this is your main supply line from the freshwater tank the valve is in line or the handle is in line so that tells you the valve is open allowing water to flow through the line freely <clears throat> this line here is your winterization blowout line you simply connect your air hose to the fitting here open the handle and it'll blow the water out of the lines there but you'll get the winterization process in a separate video all right and then this one here this is the drain from the main water tank so this goes through the floor and out through the bottom of the unit here so both of these handles you can see they are not in line with the plumbing line that means that valve is closed so if you turn this valve in line now it is draining and that opens the valve there so there you go that does it for the for those three valves all right next up we have the water access panel simply unlock your door there if you're filling the fresh water tank you'll do that right here Just remove this little cap twist it remove it insert a hose here fill the fresh water tank when you're done remove the hose and replace your cap there and then this one here is for if you have access to a pressurized system just remove this this is your typical garden hose fitting and then you can see the little filter screen here to screen out any contaminants in the water line in the water there all right and if you're using the pressurized system that does supply water directly to the faucets and the water heater and I will put this key on the around the faucet inside the unit there okay next thing I want to show you you can see here you have an LED light in between the two doors and then one just to the right of the main entry door for the unit and then we have the 36 by 78 main entry door coming on around here down here at the bottom this is the waste tank drain so to use this you're going to just simply remove this cap twist it remove that cap connect a three inch hose to it and you can get that at any rv um, and camper store or through amazon and then you're going to grab once you've hooked your hose up here you're going to grab this handle pull it out that opens up the valve in here allowing the contents of the waste drain or the waste tank to drain out once done, simply close this valve by pushing it back in, detach your hose, and replace your cap there. All right. Pretty simple function here. We'll look on down the side of the unit here. All right. Up next, two 7,000-pound wheels or axles with steel wheels on it. One thing I want to show you here is with these steel or with these axles and behind this little rubber cap here, there is a grease fitting there. Once every 10,000 miles or one year, whichever comes first, you'll need to remove that cap on each wheel. Take your grease gun and grease that fitting good. That way it keeps the hubs and the bearings properly greased so they maintain a proper working order all right and then next we have and I may have made a mistake here this looks to be more like a uh, nine foot porch not an eight foot porch sorry about that and then here you can see the flip up wall or the half wall flip up Looking inside the porch, you have the shelf here, 50 inches to the bottom of the shelf from the floor. Hand wash station there. Up in the ceiling here, we have one LED light there. Roof vent here with electric motor. And then another LED light there. And I'll turn that fan on for you once we get inside the unit. Oh.
let's look down here real quick stabilization jack and this is what that speed handle is for so with the stabilization jacks one thing to note on that and i missed the one at the front i forgot to show the one at the front corner on the driver's side here you do have one on all four corners of the trailer um, that stabilization jack is strictly for stabilizing the unit so please do not try to use that jack to level the unit you'll need to accomplish that using the jack on the nose of the trailer and placing boards underneath the tires to get it leveled out once you've leveled the unit then run your stabilization jacks down just simply to stabilize the unit so it helps keep it from rocking side to side okay um, you can use that speed crank or it takes a three-quarter inch socket on these stabilization jacks if you wanted to get an impact with a three-quarter inch socket it would be quicker all right and then we have next to that stabilization jack the waste tank drain for the rear faucet there or hand wash station all right and it functions the same as the first one that we looked at take a look at the back of the unit again eight foot half wall flip up barn doors here on the back license plate holder here so i'll show you here to open these just simply pull that up and that opens up and you see there are four D-rings here on the porch floor. Has the AT, silver ATP flooring. All right. And then just close that the same way, lift the handle. Get it in line and drop that bar in. And on the passenger side here, take a look down the unit real quick. Again, nine foot half wall flip up. Stabilization jack here. Two more wheels on this, steel wheels on this side. And again, those do have the grease fittings as well, so all four tires have it. So please make sure you grease those properly. And then here we have the eight foot concession window with flip up counter beneath it. LED light on both sides. You can see there. So with these windows, each window has a lower window an upper window and then a screen that slides up and down in between you see that screen here all right and then we'll show you how to lower this concession counter so come to the latch here depress one side come to the other side depress it and then lower it down pretty simple operation there all right move on up to the front of the unit so here we have the second 100 pound propane tank inside the propane cage there so let's talk about the gas on this as first and foremost when you receive the unit both of these 100 pound tanks will be empty uh, so you'll need to have those filled using a licensed certified authorized however you want to state it dealer that knows what they're doing when it comes to filling these tanks big thing is 100 pound propane tank holds approximately 23 gallons of propane you want to make sure that that's why we recommend a licensed certified dealer that way they have experience doing it if they were to overfill these tanks it could potentially damage the tank and most likely would damage your regulator okay so now with the gas system on the unit before we turn on any gas make sure the unit's plugged in 
and for right now the only gas you have inside the unit is back here on the porch so you want to make sure that your half wall flip ups are open and then your gas hookup is right down there in the corner that's the one drop that we placed um, so you'll want to make sure that whatever appliance you have hooked to that make sure that appliance is in the knob for it is in the off position that way no gases will flow through it once you do turn the gas on okay um, once you've verified that your can your flip up half wall flip ups are open and your appliances are in the off position then you can come back over here to the front and turn on the gas to the unit so when we're doing that we're simply going to come here turn this valve here open it all the way so you'll turn it to open it all the way there once you've done that you kind of want to listen here at the vent on the regulator sorry for the shoddy camera work there listen right here at the vent on the regulator make sure you don't have, hear any hissing of gas coming out or smell an abnormal amount of propane coming out of this if you do you potentially have a regulator that is damaged and you'll want to turn that back off and get that serviced all right if everything checks out with it then you're going to go to step two and that is again handle is not in line here so you're going to want to turn that in line once you do that now that valve is open you'll hear an initial whoosh of gas run through the line that's all you should hear you should not hear a continuous flow of gas if you do turn this back off check the knobs on your appliances again make sure that they're still in the off position all of them if they are not then make sure you turn them off again and then come back out and open this back up if they are then come back out open it again once you've opened it again and you still you hear that continuous flow of gas at that point you need to shut this back off turn your gas back off and on the tank there and contact your local gas company have them come out and inspect the unit so these gas lines i'll show you here do run underneath the trailer <clears throat> it opens up the possibility for any kind of road debris rocks chunks of rubber wood anything that may be laying on the roadway to jump up and hit the gas line and puncture it so if you hear that continuous flowing of gas it's usually either an appliance is still on or there's damage to one of the gas lines okay so if all the appliances are off make sure you contact your gas gas company have them come out and start inspect the unit and make any necessary repairs all right I want to make sure that everybody is safe when it comes to this gas here all right same thing with this one same operation and then we were asked to add two more hookups here so we did so both of those are there in between the generator box and the propane on cage on the driver's side all right let's go inside this unit and check it out here all right so first thing we see here inside of the concession window we have the 12 inch wide by eight foot long stainless steel counter here with an under shelf on it and then we have another shelf up above it's also 12 by 12 inches by eight foot long there have the e-track on the wall down the passenger side e-track on the wall here on the driver's side support in the floor there to run through to the bottom of the unit 
And then on the wall here is the shelf. It's 50 inches from the floor. We'll go out and look at this porch right quick again from the inside the unit. Give you a look at that fan. So the light switch to the light on the porch is here. And then this switch turns on the fan. Show you that working. All right. And then here's a look at that shelf. There is an electrical outlet here. So I'm sure you can hear this beeping. This is the carbon monoxide alarm and explosive gas alarm. So right now you can see zero and LB on the screen there. So the zero means that there is no carbon monoxide being detected. The LB stands for low battery. Um, as you can see, it is just plugged in. There is mounting hardware in the back of this, uh, that alarm, carbon monoxide alarm there, so that you can mount it on the wall, let you make that decision as to where you'd like to do that at there. All right. And then here we have E-Track running all along the wall here. E-Track running on both sides of the hand wash station. And then I'll show you inside the hand wash station here. Underneath is just the plumbing there. And you can see there is a valve on the cold water side and a valve on the hot water side there. So you can turn those on or off as you deem necessary. I'll show you this working. Has a little air in the line there. So you see that the way it spit water there, anytime you see that, that's because there's air in the line. So especially with the hot water side. And there's the cold water side. And we'll talk more about that hot water side here in just a minute. All right, go back inside the unit here, turn this light off. Uh, inside the unit does have the rubber coin flooring, two LED strip lights on the passenger side, two more on the driver's side, and then the heat and air unit up top. So real quick, this switch here at the front on the heat and air unit, that's your off, high cool, low cool, high fan, low fan, high heat, low heat switch. So you can set that to whichever one you'd like. And then the back switch there, that is the temperature setting. So you can turn it to hot, cold, or somewhere in between. And then this front little switch here, and this rear switch here, all those do, if you flip that, it'll turn off the airflow to the end that you flip that to. So you can have air flowing out both ends of the unit or just, or close off one end and have it flowing out just one end of the unit there. All right. Uh, up here in the front, you can see the shelf above the sinks and then the three bay sink there, hand wash station over here. And then the reason for that carbon monoxide alarm flashing low battery is because your battery is here. I don't like to put them in before the unit leaves because it will drain that battery and then you're trying to put a new one in once you take possession of it. So along with the manual, and those will be inside the unit once you take possession of it. All right. Let's talk about this water here. So. When you first turn, plug the unit in to a power supply, you'll want to come in, turn on the hot water side, and you saw the water was spitting out of a hand wash sink back there on the porch. What you want is this good constant flow of water like you see here. Once you have that, then you can plug your water heater in. If you don't have that when you plug it in, That good constant flow tells you that the water heater has been filled up. So if it's not full when you plug it in, you run the risk of 
damaging the heating element. Alright, we're going to put a temperature reading on here. 120 is what I'm looking for here. There we go, 120, yeah, that's a 123, 124, 125. So I've got it set to max just so that it heats up good. You can set it. There's a 125 setting on there. I'll show you all that here in just a moment. But um, just want to demonstrate that the water heater functions properly as it should there. But like I said, just make sure that you have that good steady flow of water before you plug your water heater in. That way we don't damage our heating element and incur any extra cost that can be avoided there. All right. So these cabinets here, simply look underneath the sinks. I'll show you from this side here. Here you can see the water heater. You can see the light there on. You can see the dial there. Right now, like I said, it's set to max 125 and then 100 in the next two settings there. Valves to turn the cold water supply off or have it on and the hot water supply on or off. Over here is your water pump and then more plumbing in your fresh water tank. All right. And there's the plug on the wall for the water heater. Over here, this is the switch to turn on the water pump. And then up here is the sink cover. I'll set this down just a moment here and put that sink cover in place. And there's the sink cover in place so that you have a working platform now. As you can see that. And I need to show you the water working on the hand wash side. Hand wash sink here. And you see it stood a little bit there. It still had a little air in the line. That hot water side is good. All right. Let's go around and test these plugs right quick. Two lights means it works. There we go. That one is good. Again, sorry for the camera work. And there we go. All right, now let's go over shutdown procedures. So, end of the day, sold a lot of food, made a lot of money hopefully, and we're ready to shut the unit down, clean up and go home for the day. So, first thing you wanna do is shut off any gas appliances you have. So go back to them, turn them off. Once you've turned them off, you'll Come back out to the front of the unit, turn the gas off on the tank, and then turn that valve to the off position. So again, this is on, flip that to where it's not in line, that valve is now off, and then close up your valve on the tank good. All right, once you've done that, now all your gas is off, and you're ready to proceed shutting down the unit. Um, I do recommend that at the end of the day, when you before you go home or, or before you leave from exit the trailer for the final time for the day, uh, unplug the water heater. That way you can just ensure that every time you build that habit, you ensure that every time you get in the unit, 
you're checking and making sure that that water heater is full before plugging it in and helping to avoid damaging the unit or the element inside that water heater. All right. So outside of that, on the door here, oh, right here next to the door, here's the three light switches. This turns on the interior LED lights and then the two LED lights next to the doors and the two LED lights next to the concession window. And then on the door here, this has some general safety guidelines and procedures, start up and shut down procedures, and then uh, before transit, so thing, before transit, things like check the lug nuts, um, the tire pressure, make sure your lights all function properly, and you know you've disconnected your waste hose things of that sort so just give that a check that out give that a look over and again it is a sticker on the inside of the door there so that you have that there to look at and reference anytime so we thank you for doing business with sle have a great day